So once again this season, the greatest manager in the world has tripped and stumbled over a significant hurdle. Remember that this is a manager that tore apart the Spanish league and created one of the very best Barcelona teams that has ever been assembled. He went on to Bayern Munich and did the same. Now he's come to Manchester City and with all their riches at his disposal, he hasn't been able to recreate the magic. His side got beat fairly over two amazing legs against an excellent Monaco side who could go on to win the Champions League outright. This weekend, his side faced Liverpool and we all know how well Liverpool play against teams that like to play football. And should Klopp's men turn the blue half of Manchester over, there would be legitimate pressure on the Spaniard. What's it, who, who won the league at Man City? Mancini won it. So in my eyes, Mancini's a, a better manager than Pep Guardiola currently. Where are they in league third? They certainly ain't second because Spurs are. Should his City side fail to qualify for the Champions League, the absolute minimum you'd expect, what then? If you were the City board, would you begin to question Pep Guardiola's position at the club, or would you give him more time to build the squad he needs to conquer England? Let us know in the comments below. Here's a quick nod to AFC Wimbledon, who managed to topple MK Dons in their league match this week. It's amazing to think that 12 years ago, the Wimbledon fans created a club because their own had been ripped from them. Now, they're six points above them in League One, an amazing story that can prove that fan power can defeat big business if the cause is great enough. And also, shout out to whoever put the programme together. The cover had absolutely zero reference to Milton Keynes' side. I'm curious to know what you think. Let us know in the comments below. Is it time to let MK Dons get on with it, or should they never, ever be forgiven for what happened previously? Ronnie Rosenthal is heading up a consortium to buy Charlton Athletic. I've got nothing to say on this, other than I hope it goes well for Charlton, given the fact that they've gone through the mill. And I can't imagine that they're overly excited about this either. The only reason we brought up Rocket Ronnie was to show you this clip from 1992. <laughs> He's a funny looking bloke though, weren't he Jim? He looked somewhere between a vampire and a car salesman. To be fair to Rocket Ronnie, he did do this for Tottenham against Southampton as well. Can he work the magic again? Oh, he can! Respect where it's due. He was absolute pony though, James. Is it jelly? What? Is that jelly or gel? LA Galaxy's Gel Van Dam was the subject of football's injustice over the weekend as his side were beaten 1-0 by Portland Timbers. Where they get these fucking names from? I wish I was called Flav Van Dam. How easy would it be to pull birds? What's your name? Ah, Flav Van Damme. Bollocks, is it? Well, it is. Yeah, no one's called Flav. Well. <laughs> the defender was sent off for two bookable offences, although it's clear his first yellow card came after a dive from Portland's Diego Shara. Van Damme took to Twitter whilst the game was still being played to rip into Shara, posting a picture of two men diving into a sea and Galaxy's social media team joined their player in trolling Shara. They created a version of the famous shooting star meme. It's not famous, infamous. Shara tripped up by Yellow Bar Dom. James, what is this shit? Comments time, let's not mess about, let's get straight into it. Joe Ross, the beards get thicker as you move to the right. It's on Social Club. All oh, right. Show the clip. I'm joined by Flav, I'm joined by Chris, and I'm joined by Jean Paul Gaultier as well. <laughs> 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 yeah. Or whatever you decide to say in the comments. <laughs> I expect where's Wally. <laughs> Ball Street is known for its, its community, uh, a very open community that welcomes all. Um, and sometimes that drifts towards something that's a bit more tactile. Um, there's a lot of love in the room, and often when we're doing videos. And this has been spotted by uh, Daniel Fordham. Right. He says, too much sexual tension between Sam and Flav. This is in the who's the greatest ever Premier League what? right winger. There true? was no sexual tension. Well, uh, what? Well, run the cliff again. <laughs> oh, check it with Beckham, right? A right winger, you want them to be... Oh, yeah. Come on. I, I don't know Come what to on. say. I don't know. I, I mean... It may be, maybe there is something there, you know? I've never thought of him like that, but... You know? Mm. I don't think you can control yourself. 
See, and people, it, the cracks are starting to appear. I think people are starting to see it. People used to think that, you know, maybe you cared for me that way. And obviously, Sam's. I there. wouldn't call it caring. Well, look, and it's this much is. More uh, can I understand why I'm paranoid when I read this comment? CJ McFluffballs. Nice. Flav looks like the kind of mate that you'd confide your relationship troubles to. He would see it as an opportunity to graft your missus. He'd elbow <laughs> deep before you could say, James looks like Marion Parhas. <laughs> Firstly, that's not that? fucking what true. I would never, I'd never ever row my mate's bird, ever. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever chucked in a bit of flirting when it's not going well with a guy and a girl that you know, he's sweating. your mate, you know, no. you know something's going on. No, no, I'd never do my mates like that, never, never, and you do look like Marion Parr. <laughs> no, you I don't. You are a fucking ringer. <laughs> Let's talk about football now, a bit, a bit more football. <laughs> really? oh, well, sort of, just about. Uh, Leicester City, Unbelievable. The yeah. last team left in the Champions League. Yeah. Um, and this isn't a YouTube comment, but this has come from the Bull Street Network WhatsApp uh, comment. I've, I've covered the names All right. because I don't think they want to do it. I'm pretty sure Sam doesn't either. No, I'm not for it. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, one comment from one of the head men of a fan channel. I said, if Leicester by some miracle win this Champions League, I will eat Sam Peoples on Facebook Live. I will eat Sam Peoples. Looking what does that, that mean? Well, the person uh, who commented after, which wasn't Sam, um, he he saw it as this: they aren't beating Barca or Bayern, but if they do, I'll eat Sam's cock on Facebook. I'm <laughs> All not right. Sure. If, if if they do, I'm categorically saying I'll eat Sam's cock if uh, if, if Leicester win the Champions if League. If they don't. <laughs> nah, I'm not for it. There's no Leicester chance. City, no a chance. Absolutely no chance. Wow. Leicester City. No. Okay. Well, that's the question. That's the, this is one of the two questions from top comments. Let us know if Leicester City. Do you think they can win the Champions League? And if they do, if you don't think they will, put your balls on the line <laughs> and let us know what you would do if Leicester won the Champions League. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? Mad, isn't it? <laughs> you pick these questions. Yeah. Is that a good call? They're no way winning the Champions Football. League. There's no way they're winning the league. Yeah, but they're not. Barcelona, Bayern Munich do not exist in this. Monaco did not exist in the Premier League. Monaco. Mon Monaco. What's it? They're fucking. They're really good. And finally, let's probably get to football now. Uh, tits was back this week. Yeah, loved it. Loved yeah, it. Yeah, good to go loved, down the. Loved tits. The what is it? Sell a space place? I don't know who. Okay. Doesn't no matter. It's the content not, that's great. No, have, have a look. The yeah. background is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Anyway, we're talking about Lukaku who's rejected a contract. It's not quite as weird as Chelsea agreeing to eat Sam's like... dick. <laughs> Go on. Sorry. <laughs> Lukaku. Yeah, uh, they were talking about Lukaku rejecting uh, an offer from Everton and I didn't say it, but I, I led to the point that maybe he, he could leave Everton to go to a bigger club in Chelsea. Bran H said, Chelsea aren't a bigger club than Everton. Silly James. Well, no, I, I agree. They're not a bigger club than, than, than Everton. They've just had money for longer. Okay, but I bet a lot of other people would say that Chelsea are big. I'm um, not saying idiots. they're bigger. Idiots. I want you guys to let us know uh, in the comments below. Let's have a conversation. Who is a bigger club, Everton or Chelsea? Let us know. I, I have one proviso. Cool. Um, if you remove all of Chelsea, all of the success they've achieved since getting all the money, then I mean that's what you have to do because that's cheating. What they've done is doping essentially, and Man City they're doping, and they're not with drugs but with money. Mm. They're doping the game. Drugs are bad, are they? Unfair advantage. Uh, it, 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 the, <laughs> yeah, they are over. over <laughs> by and large, I would say drugs are bad. <laughs> And now for a completely fucked up story. Apologies in advance, but we feel this story had to be told. What I'm gonna do is just lay out the facts and, and there's gonna be no opinion and, and it pretty much speaks for itself. So Brazilian keeper Bruno met Eliza Samaldo at a sex party that he and his teammates regularly visited. Bruno became besotted with Eliza, who later became pregnant when they had sex and the codnob split. He wanted her to have an abortion and she refused. She had the baby and demanded he support her and the child. He demanded that the baby have a DNA test to prove that he was the father and it was proven that he was. He refused to pay her child support. He lured her into a car, promising to give her a house, a car and money. She was pistol whipped, taken to his house where she was tortured for six days in front of her child until she died. She was then chopped up and her body was fed to dogs. He denied everything. 
and was later convicted of murder and sentenced to just 21 years. Seven years later, he's been released on a technicality. And now, and you're not going to believe this, he has been signed by Boa Esporte, a Brazilian football club. Again, I realise how dark a story this is and really don't want to be talking about it, but this is happening now and it's happening in the sport that we love. And if people aren't talking about it, then he will be allowed to get away with this sort of thing and resume a career that's going to earn him a lot of money. Remember to subscribe to Ball Street and join us again next Thursday for more Talking Balls.